right, let's talk about that third layer of the pyramid, tools. Um, we've mentioned that you're going to have a lot of data to share about your requirements. So without a doubt, you must have tools to manage the information and the communication, particularly when we aren't all in the same room anymore. You know, users are busy. Developers often don't have or even want direct contact with users. And everyone has conflicting priorities that need to be resolved. So with a variety of tools, we can create this virtual community that enhances project communication. You know, there's five types of tools that we use. They are team collaboration, issue tracking, requirements management, requirements collection, and document management. And integrating these tools completely into a team, well, it's going to help you get this Im communication improvement in your team. So you might use issue tracking tools to log issues um, that need to be resolved. Uh, hopefully this is going to help you keep from missing requirements. But what I want to say about this, a lot of projects do this once they get into development. It's sort of that defect tracking. What we're saying here is start that process earlier in your project. When you start doing requirements, you're going to come up with things that you don't have the answer to that you need to follow up on. Those are the kinds of things that should go in your issue tracking tool to make sure that you get resolution on them. Use a requirements management tool so that users can monitor the project progress and give their feedback that can help clarify requirements. You can even have discussions in there about the requirements. Requirements collection tools, they're going to allow your requirements team to put captured requirements down on paper immediately. And then ideally it's going to help them elicit better requirements from users right in the moment. A common document management tool is important. So the documents are available in a single location. Everybody knows where to get them. They can get that relevant information no matter where they are in the world. And then a team collaboration tool is going to help enable something as simple as project team members having each other's contact info, but they also can really help if they have things like chat rooms in them. It provides the capability so the distributed team members can really quickly ask and get uh, quick answers to their questions about the requirements. Now, we could suggest specific tools to select for each of these, but honestly, that right tool is going to vary greatly by the culture and the actual needs of your organization. That said, I want to talk a little bit more about team collaboration tools. Um, I think it's kind of an interesting area. These are going to be things like SharePoint or a simple wiki, uh, chat tools such as Skype, message boards. Microsoft has a product called Groove. Um, and then, of course, there's OneNote, which is fantastic if you're trying to share uh, notes across teams. Anthony, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences in this area? I know you guys created a community using SharePoint at Dell. Is it unprofessional to say, yay, I love OneNote? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, this actually, this portion of the of the presentation, I'm really kind of giddy about. And the reason why is it, it's, a, it's a reflection of the requirements community at Dell. And there are basically several different areas we're going to focus on here. And the couple of things I want to say about our, our community, by the way, the requirements engineering community of practice at Dell is representative of business analysts across the regions and our different areas around the globe and of the segments. So the IT world, product group, and not to mention the services space. And without these folks, I'll tell you something. It really makes it hard for, for me to, to bounce ideas off folks, to really understand where the community or what the requirements practice, practices are at Dell. And so um, by having this type of forum to draw people to and to um, grab information and data, it's very, very good. So let's go through this um, spreadsheet here for just a moment. I'm sorry, this, uh, this slide for just a moment here. I'm going to concentrate here on the left-hand navigation of our site. This is, by the, by the way, created in SharePoint. So if you have SharePoint, you, know, you can use this as a model if you'd like. The first area is the best practices and articles library. So the entire community has the opportunity to go and, and post presentations, uh, tidbits of information and learning. Perhaps you find an article on Gartner or Forrester. We can go pop populate that there. And so I, I have a place where I can find out what's the latest going on in, in the requirements world. Um, the COP meetings, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the announcements, I'll talk about in a moment, as well as the links. The RECOP agenda topics, this is pretty spiffy as well. Um, I'm just one person in a, in a small team in the, the engineering process group in enterprise architecture. And because we're so small, we don't always have the ability to connect to everyone um, right, right at the same moment. And so this particular area allows, um, it's basically a, a list, and it allows the individuals from the COP and even new individuals coming into the organization to go and say, I think that the, the community of practice should talk about uh, user stories. 
And then the other person may say, well, I think I'd rather talk about requirements collaboration tools. And so the entire community can go in here and actually list and identify a description and what they want to talk about with the community. And typically a CLP meeting, which we have about once a month, we can cover about two agenda items. So this is nice for the community to handle the agenda topics that they want to look at rather than me saying, thou shalt do this. And, and that's no fun. In a discussion place, is just another forum for us to have discussions. And speaking of discussions, uh, just recently we had a blog. Um, we, as in, I, I had some ideas and questions, and I wanted to, to pick the brains of my community. And some folks actually chimed in, like Vic Oppio and, and Michael and some other folks. And if I'm missing your name, by the way, I, I apologize. I'll, I'll send you some candy when we're done here. In any event, the, the blog is a great place to, to, to be interactive with the environment. But I will say this. If you don't have a culture that's used to using blogs or communication techniques like a SharePoint site or collaborative tools, don't worry. Just send out emails every couple of weeks and, and, and remind folks that, that that area is there for them. Uh, further on this side are the announcements. So any announcements that are for free training in any of the region, segments, or areas, or even in Austin, we try to keep that information here. And when I have uh, updates to let folks know what's going on in requirements engineering, basically well, I'll put it in the announcements section. Finally, um, as I mentioned earlier, in the discussion place, it's another idea for me to, or, or for the whole community to, uh, to gather information and data. So the, the COP top meeting topics, um, I was trying to, this is my initial release, to try to find if you have a topic you want to talk about, you know, list it there. We have some links out to external sites and internal sites. Our friends and, and colleagues over at Sea level uh, there actually have been some instances where I've needed some help on a project. Um, when I help project teams within the, the organization, sometimes I don't know the answer. So I can go to a blog here at Sea level and just pester a few folks and get some feedback. We also have links out to our software development lifecycle, the create system business, create business requirements and the create system requirements processes that really help explain to new or inexperienced requirements practitioners how to create a business requirements or vision scope artifact and how to create a systems artifact. The challenge is actually getting folks to go there and, and actually read that content. But uh, I'd rather have that challenge than not having this at all. The, the last area of COP meetings and members, this is kind of self-explanatory. Um, I try to do a good job of, well, at least I try to do a job of capturing the meetings uh, and the things that come out in the conversation and place that there. So if somebody missed the meeting or somebody missed the, the, uh, the presentation, that they have an ability to go back and look. It's not perfect, but hey, it's a start. And... Um, I must say this. Um, oh, oh, something that's not on here that should be, and I'm working on that, is a workshop. We have some needs in our organization to create workshops internally and externally. And so I, I'm thinking of adding a site here to, to allow folks to say, what kind of workshop would you like in terms of requirements? Elicit eliciting, analyzing, even putting together use cases and business requirements. But keep in mind this. For any collaborative tool, whether it be uh, SharePoint or OneNote, Hooray, uh, or anything else for that matter. If you build it or put it there, it doesn't mean people will automatically use it or, or, or will come to the site. You have to be engaged. You have to go out into the organization and, and, and ask people what they need, what they want, or, or what they would like to use. So if it weren't for the... I'll say this again, and I can't belabor it. Your communities, the folks that are in your organization or your mentors or those folks externally that you can talk to, like uh, IBA members, Joy, uh, Tao, uh, Rob or even folks internally, without those folks, it really is imp it's hard to do our work. And so utilize those folks. The community is important. And it, the COP, I cannot uh, uh, thank them enough, actually, for the work that they do with me. So anyhow, that's, that's a little bit about building a community on SharePoint. Thanks, Anthony, for sharing that. I, I think that's really impressive what you guys have built there.